Welcome back. Take a look at this. Close your eyes. See with mine. You were a top student, but look at you now. You can't keep using your father's disappearance as an excuse to act out. Is that his work? Well, what's it about? Their dad, he wanted to touch the stars. Imagine that the ant here wants to get to her other hand. The quickest option is to walk across the street. But it turns out a straight line is not the shortest distance between two points. Not if you use a fifth dimension. It's outside of the rules we know of time and space. So the ant arrives in my hand instantaneously. So you fall to space. More likely wrinkle it. Where are we? We heard a cry out in the universe. My father's alive. We believe he is, and we're here to help you find him. We are in search of warriors. Warriors who serve the good and the light in the universe. You're kidding. Do I look like I'm kidding? A little. I'm not. I'm not. Your father's trapped by an evil energy. It's too strong for our light. And the only one who can stop it is you. Be a warrior. I'm so thrilled to introduce you to our next guest, who at the age of 10 read the book A Wrinkle in Time. I can see the picture on the wall behind her head of the book that I carried to school in the seventh grade <laughs> and that my fifth grade niece is now reading. Catherine Hand is with us, and she has written a new book called, as you see on her screen and also on mine, Becoming a Warrior. And this is Catherine's memoir of having read A Wrinkle in Time at 10 years old and understanding that this needed to be made to a movie. Fast forward 50 years, it finally happened. So with all the wit and wisdom and the life stories that we can all share, this book has been a joy to read. It has kept me coming back over and over, not only because it's so quotable, but just the stories inside engage all ages. So as we're here talking about kids and we're focusing our whole show on different aspects of learning for kids, this is an opportunity to really combine some wonderful stories for children of all ages, us included. So Catherine, thank you so much for being with us. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Lauren, for having me. What a joy. This is lots of fun. It is lots of fun. It's fun because you made it fun. So I have to, in the spirit of full disclosure, when we were assigned the book, A Wrinkle in Time in the seventh grade, I wasn't into reading. It wasn't, it just, wasn't on my roster. I was busy having fun with friends, but I, I kind of slogged through it and had a very different experience than you did. What I'm thrilled to see is that my niece now in fifth grade is reading it and she's having your experience of it. So I have been able to relive A Wrinkle in Time through you. Please share because it's so much more fun hearing from you. Um in the world did a 10 year old girl know that this was going to happen well you know i'm i'm so glad you asked me that because uh it, i think 10 years old 10 11 years old perfect ages to read a wrinkle in time you know there's that gray area you're still kind of a tomboy or a kid but you got to grow up and i was having um 
I remember the day that I uh, was sent to the library for talking in class, I was in fifth grade. Uh, I went to the library, you know, they had round tables in our school library and the librarian came over and asked, you know, what kind of books you like to read. I like you did not want to read. I wanted to play handball or be outside or climb a tree. And, um, and she said, well, here, and she showed me the cover of A Wrinkle in Time and had won the Newbery Award uh, that year. And she said, it's a, about a story um, about a girl just like you. And I think that you would like it. And I'm sitting there very glum because I had been you know, sent to the library. And I opened up a random page. And on the page, I saw the word October. And my birthday is in October. And so on the basis of that, I just I told her I would give it a try. And that night I started the book and fell in love. I so identified with Meg Murray, who was always getting in trouble. She always felt everything was her fault. You know, she felt like a biological mistake. All of these things that Meg felt, I felt. So I loved her and I wanted to um, know more about her. And then the mystery, right? That her father has disappeared and these three magical beings come to rescue these children to take them to find father. Well, I thought that was just a fantastic story. And, and, um, and I finished the book and I just thought Walt Disney should absolutely make this a movie and star me as Meg. <laughs> I, I started this letter to him and I was so shy and I just didn't bring myself to finish it or mail it. And, um, and that's how Wrinkle in Time came into my life. Amazing. And it didn't, so it didn't happen quite then. I understand that you didn't send the letter to Walt Disney. Uh, so you had a lot of life between that. Yeah. And so the what happened was um, a couple of years after I read the book, Walt Disney died. And I was just devastated because I, I loved him. I never met him. I just loved who Walt Disney was, what he represented. And I felt so guilty that I hadn't sent that letter. And I knew of no one else who made movies for children. So I made a promise to myself that day, December 15th, 1966, that I would grow up and make it. And 50 years to the day, we were on the set making that movie. And it was really exciting to finally see it come true. The part that I love most is that you never lost sight of that dream, which I think so many of us just in the course of life, we say we change our dreams or we're willing to let go of dreams, but how did you keep that spark alive? Well, I think partially it's because of the story itself and the book. I mean, also many, many other things happened. My relationship with Madeline Langle and, and other people that came into my life through the years. But I think the story itself speaks to their different parts and times in your life. And so it meant one thing to me as a child, I met something completely different as a young career woman. And I met Madeline and saw the story through her eyes. It met something completely different when um, I was a mom and now raising my own children. It really meant something. It was very important to me when I was working with Norman Lear and we were uh, countering the divisive me message of the Christian right because I was working with Madeline at the time and she had such a expansive, inclusive view of Christianity and tolerance and love. And, and as she once said to me, she wrote A Wrinkle in Time as a reaffirmation of life. And I, I always loved that. I thought, oh, what a wonderful reason to make a movie. And, and then later on, when uh, my husband died suddenly unexpectedly and I had to raise three young children, there were many things in the book that spoke to me from um, the point of view as a widow and how I had to find the courage and, and strength to overcome this darkness. You know, Madeline once said to me, there are many forms of darkness and we can't always change the darkness, but we can overcome our fear of it. And oftentimes it is our fear of whatever that darkness is that holds us back. And so I think in the course of making the movie, I had to overcome so many different things and I had to overcome so many different forms of darkness. And I think it all started, this, uh, this drive was the very first time I read A Wrinkle in Time, Kennedy had been assassinated. 
And um, everybody around me, all the adults were saying that hope had died, you know, innocence had died. And I was, I was 10 years old. And I was like, so sad that hope had died. <laughs> you're 10, you take all of everything people say in the grownups, literally. And, and, and I was reading A Wrinkle in Time and, um, and I really got the message that darkness exists and it can be overcome. So that was a very, very powerful message to get at that moment in my life. And I think that that just stayed with me for 50 years. Which is remarkable. And following your trail, your journey of who you met and when, and the fact that you did meet Madeline Lengel and, and that you worked for years with Norman Lear and were able to learn how things worked in Hollywood and, and just in the world at large, because his his working relationships are so far beyond just the making of TV and movies. I know you really, um, you had a front row seat, so to speak, for a lot of cool stuff that most of us would never even think of. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the reason why I wrote the book was just to share those stories. I want other people to learn, or, or at least if there was a germ of something in what I went through, if it, if it helped somebody somewhere down the line, it was worth the effort. I really, I have to say that from my perspective in reading the book, which, which was a journey through joy, really, um, yeah. I, I was able, I was thinking a lot like, who's my Mrs. What's it? And, and who's my Mrs. Which? And, and where have I learned these lessons? But also, who's my, who was my Norman Lear? Or who was my, and, and you really do start to think back on the journey of your life, if you haven't thought of it that way, at least that's where it guided me to say, oh, yeah. I've always known that it took every single moment of my life to get me to where I am right now, right. but I don't know how many people actually sit down and think about it that way. So in the telling of the story, what I loved is that the way you tell the story is the way I would sit down and tell a story to my niece, for instance, okay. and, and give her the history. So just the way your stories evolved and the way you shared it, I found myself laughing and crying at the same time. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. It was really fun. Oh, I'm so glad. I, um, I mean, I obviously think A Wrinkle in Time is a wonderful story, particularly for 10 and 11 year olds to read, because I think it paints a big, beautiful picture of the universe and helps us all understand we have a role to play. You know, I mean, I loved that Jennifer Lee and Ava DuVernay came up with the expression, be a warrior. You know, mm -hmm. be a warrior is not in the book. Madeline talks about the fighters and Jennifer just changed the word from fighters to warriors. But, um, you know, she has said, she said to me, and I know she said to many others that her, she was very afraid of World War II, the advent of World War II. And, and in her mind, war is dark. And I think that she really wanted to go and light candles, you know, if you light candles and move back to darkness. And I think that that very much motivated her to write this book because at the time she wrote it, she was also living through the McCarthy era. And um, as she said, many forms of darkness, but um, we all have, this is why it's so great for a 10 year old because, you know, fighters don't live in the past, fighters are right now. Right. And I think that um, we all can become warriors. And, you know, I, I think learning from Madeline, and not to say that I didn't learn a lot of this from my parents too, but learning from Madeline that love isn't what you feel, it's what you do, is how I became a warrior. Oftentimes, you know, we say we love something, or we, you know, but it, it's really our action. Love is action. And it was Meg's action of loving her brother that saved him. She was able to do for her brother something she couldn't do for herself. And in that she found the confidence and courage, which I think I did. You know, I think that I had a lot of things I had to overcome and in overcoming them is where I found the confidence and courage. So it, it's not lost on any of us having seen the trailer just uh, in the beginning of this segment that it didn't turn out to be just any movie. I mean, this is a pretty star-studded cast. All right. <laughs> so in your wildest dreams, as you were coming through, once you realized you were probably too old to play Meg, um, yeah. 
<laughs> is that how you envisioned the outcome? Did the movie did, did the movie reach your expectation? Because I know after 50 years of an expectation, it's a pretty big <laughs> expectation. <laughs> well, I think the best answer for that is that as the as the story itself, as they told you, means something different at every different time in my life. So too did the cast in my head. <laughs> you know, it was always changing. I mean, if you can think of this, when I was 10 years, I thought the perfect person to play Mrs. Witch was Katherine Hepburn, who at the time I thought was so old. And I look back and she was 45 years old. <laughs> I, tell you, I don't think 45 is very old anymore. But, um, and I, Oprah, I think said it best. Oprah said one time, she said, you know, you have been trying to make this at an appointed time and it was made at an anointed time. And wow. I think that it did get made finally because of Ava's vision and the collaboration of all of us, that when Ava said that she wanted to do it with a diverse cast, and it was like, oh my God, this is the 21st century way of looking at this story. And yeah. so we were very, very fortunate that um, that's the studio, that Ava, everybody involved, you know, came together and made this movie. And I, I'm very, very proud of it and very grateful. So let's do two things. One is, where can our viewers find the movie if they haven't seen it? I think it's it's available on Disney Plus. Disney Plus, but you can okay. always um, rent it through. Um, I don't. I don't know. Does Disney? I guess you have to go to Amazon to rent a video or yes, buy, right? Yes. Buy it through Disney. Yeah. So obviously, you know, you can just go and rent it or buy it at Disney. I mean, at Amazon. And elsewhere, whatever they uh, rent or sell videos. And where can our viewers find their copy of the newly released Becoming a Warrior? And oh. let us know that. Oh, Amazon and any place that someone would go to buy a book. Because even if it's not on their shelf, at the moment you walk in, they can order it for you. So it's available. Perfect. Perfect. And I really recommend to everyone the package, the combination of the book and the movie is so powerful as, as we're coming up on the holidays or just any day, I recommend it for kids of all ages. And if you've ever had a dream and thought that it wasn't worthy, I believe Catherine's story is going to help power you through to really bringing your dreams to life. Catherine, Thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time in making this happen. And I know everyone else will as well. Oh, thank you so much. This is such a joy. I love talking to you and I hope people enjoy becoming a warrior. My journey to bring a wrinkle in time to the screen. Thank you. And we'll be right back.